when we look at the sky, on a dark cloudless night, preferably in a region far from urban centers, countless stars enchant us with their brightness. At this point, we are thinking of the numerous galaxies that lurk in deep space. If one in ten of the stars that make up these galaxies had a planet spinning around it, it would be hard not to think about the possibility of extraterrestrial life, whether intelligent or not. It's a matter of statistics. However, the Earth is the only place in the universe where this is confirmed, at least so far. At some inaccurate moment in history, our eyes snapped open and, in the wake of our awareness, we realized that there was an entire universe, pulsing around us. In order to survive, in an environment that is both beautiful and hostile, we had to educate our senses. For example, to prevent us from being burned again, by fire, we had to burn ourselves first. Winter must have taught us to cover our bodies, pushing us far more than the shame of nakedness. What I mean, finally, is that we have been developing certain behavioral patterns that, over time, have structured our memory. In order for things outside to become real or known, they had to be sifted through our senses and, subsequently, coincide with the patterns and stereotypes stored in our brains. Since each query to these files takes time, however minimal, it takes us away from the present. That is, the concepts of the future and the present are confused, because the future, in this case, would result from only being able to look at the present of the universe with delay. This is evident in the finding that in order to be seen, objects need to be illuminated. Our memory would have forced us to interact with reality always in a lagged way, or in response to the good or bad stimulus it sent us. Time has also brought us many interpretative problems, as our intelligence has evolved. The first of these was our conclusion that all that exists is what would already be in our past. The future does not exist for us, because it cannot be remembered. In this form of approach, I notice that it would be possible to think of the existence of a static universe, even if it were outside the direct range of our brain. At the same time it would be within reach of our physical body, just by stretching our arm. It would look something like this. In a static universe, time would not exist. The present would be an eternal moment. If we said that this universe would be similar to the surface of a lake of calm waters, having only two dimensions, width and length, everything in this universe model would have to be at the center. Of course, our kind of conscious life, even taking up space in this utopian place, could not have known it. The observer would have to be banished from there, to a place with at least three dimensions, called space-time. Once he had developed consciousness, in this new place, he could not remember the previous one. Even so, he would carry with him the condition that still remain always on the center, without depending on the position he occupied in space. The center which was once everywhere, would now be just where an isolated observer with a memory stood, and who cast a curious look around him. Another detail, related to the existence of a hypothetical two-dimensional and timeless universe, is that it would have no sides, either outside or inside, above or below. Do you find this strange? For know that these observations are in accordance with the expansionary universe model, defended by physicists.
the model assumes that galaxies would not abandon their positions in the space that shelters them as they move away from each other with ever increasing speed. For physicists, it is the space around the galaxies that would be stretching. Think of the model of a birthday balloon, where you would paint on the rubber and with the aid of a pen, several small dots. If the balloon blew and its two-dimensional surface were inflated, the painted dots would not move out of their place or center, but would gradually move away from each other. This image would be the same as the two-dimensional surface of a lake, if it could be stretched. As for the question of laterality, astronomers tell us that the universe could only have one side. It is that we would be an integral part of the inner expansionary movement, which would have been established after the Big Bang. There would be no way out of spacetime, and thus, to know if there was anything outside of it. This question can be solved simply. Let's say that you'll send to your friend, who lives in a distant city, a crate containing a gift. You know that if the crate has an inside, what is the object to be sent, it will necessarily have an outside, on which, you will put the postal address. The same would be expected for spastime, if it had an inside. This leads us to the conclusion that the universe would, indeed, have no sides. When we think of the space that houses distant galaxies, it becomes a little tricky to think of the existence of a universe that had only two dimensions. In his book The Universe in a Nutshell, Stephen Hawking recalls that a two-dimensional animal would have difficulty digesting food. But everything becomes possible if we take into account that space, without depending on how many dimensions it may have, needs a messenger who can open our head and hurt our ears by saying, two-dimensional space exists, even if you can't see it directly. Space, it seems, does not have the power to communicate us directly any events it engages in, at least when it comes to our point of view. This is implicit in the uncertainty of the position of distant light sources. For example, you need the light of a star to have reached your position. Only then, can you know that it shines in the distance, in an uncertain place of space. This would exclude the previous travel time of the light of the star, if that time existed, because you see the star instantly, and at a distance, which happens seemingly continuously. If it were not for the presence of light, the star would not exist, even if it still were there. It can be seen that the time the light has shifted from the star has been banished from our sensory reality, because, regardless of the distance between us, the star can be spotted instantly. All that is needed is to lift our heads to the night sky 